building our jigsaw puzzle, start out by opening a new Google Drawings file. Once you're in the Google Drawings file, I'm going to paste in the image that I grabbed from a website and quickly readjust the size of it. Then I'm going to go up to the text box tool and add some text boxes to hide some text in it. I don't want it to blend in all the way, but I want to make it hard enough that you have to put the puzzle together in order to do it. So you'll see it takes a little bit of adjustment to figure out what words you want where. Um, I'm going to choose the color that I want it to go in, and I'm going to change the font and the size, and then I'll go up to the colors and start playing around with what color I'm using. Again, I don't want it to be too far off, but I want you to have to assemble the puzzle in order to figure out what I'm trying to get at. You see, I'm copying and pasting that same text box, so I don't have to redo all the rest of that stuff. All I have to do is change the text and change the color. So I'm going to start out by changing the color to be a little closer to this yellow section. You can see that one is a little too close because you can't see it. So I'll fast forward through this part. You're going to just keep going through and figure out what colors and what text you want in different sections. So you can see I have made the text so that it complements the color in the background. I'm going to download that image and then remove everything from the drawing and then pop it back in. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when people are using the jigsaw puzzle, there won't be text boxes and things for them to get confused about if this is just going to be an image of the thing that I made. Next, I'm going to draw some lines so that I can map out what my different pieces are going to look like. And I'm going to make this a 12-piece puzzle. So you can see I am going through and trying to figure out what size pieces and how those pieces are going to look. And actually, I think I'm going to change that and make this into a 16-piece puzzle to make it a little more challenging. And you can do this however you want to. And you don't actually have to make lines. For me, when I'm doing this, it's a lot easier if I go through and make the lines when I start cropping things. Now I'm ready to start making my pieces. I'm going to crop this image just down to this one size. So for each of those blocks, I'm going to crop the image. I have it copied and pasted, so you're going to copy and paste the whole image, and then as you crop one piece, paste the whole thing back in again, and then crop it again. So you can see I'm going to go through and crop each of these things to make the individual puzzle pieces. And you'll notice sometimes the lines will go away. Um, there's a couple of lines that were particularly weird about doing that. Um, you can draw the lines back in, or at this point I didn't really need the lines again. So you can add them if you want to, or not have them. It's completely up to you. But you can see I'm using that crop tool up at the top to crop the image and make all of the individual pieces in the puzzle. So I'll fast forward through this part because I'm going to go through and individually create all 16 of those pieces again.
So at this point I have all of the pieces created and now I'm going to start removing the lines that I drew in here um, and also just work a little bit on cleaning up what the individual puzzle pieces look like. So I'm going to click on the lines and then delete each one so that the lines are no longer in the file. And you'll notice that um, there are a couple parts on here where you can see lines. Um, so that, that mean, that's telling me that the pieces aren't completely perfect. So right here, I'm going to go through and I'm going to go back to the crop tool. I'm just going to drag the lines out a little bit. You don't want to, you want to make sure that you're using the crop tool because otherwise the aspect ratio will get off and the piece won't match up the way that you want it to. So I'm just going to go through with the crop tool and clean up all those little pieces. You probably can see a couple of white lines and by using the crop tool and then dragging out the edge just a tiny bit, it gets rid of that white space so it looks just like the, the pieces are all matching up, which is what I want. Now that my puzzle pieces are all in the spots that they want and I've got them as close to perfect as I think I'm probably going to try and get them, I'm going to change the outline to a light gray. And the reason I'm doing that is to make it easier for the user to see that these are all individual pieces. Um, it's also going to help once I scramble all these pieces because if I left them like this, there's really no reason that anyone would want to make the puzzle go together because the solution's already here. So I'm going to go through and do a, the same light gray line around each one. And you can choose any color you want for this. I just picked light gray to make the, the image easy to see but it doesn't really matter, it's completely up to you. So now I'm going to move all the pieces, scramble them all up so that when the people look at my puzzle, they're initially going to see a jumbled mess of puzzle pieces. So I want them to have to then put them together in the order that they belong. You'll notice that I left a couple that are just white pieces and that is, I only left two like that and that can be a bit of a challenge, especially if you're doing this with people who have never done it or with, um, with your students. You know best if that's going to work for your, for your target audience or not. So I guess bear that in mind when you're creating your puzzle. So I'm hiding all of the things that have text on them so that the people can't see initially that there's text there. So my hope is that they'll just start putting the, together the puzzle and then realize that there's text on there. step is adding into the puzzle. So I'm going to change the last words from edit to copy so that when you click on this link it forces a copy into your Google Drive account. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go to my puzzle page and our icon has changed a little bit um, but I'm going to paste this link to go with this image. So when you click on the image it'll take you to the puzzle and force you to make a copy of it so that it's in your account. Hope this helps for you creating your own jigsaw puzzles in Jive.